What is going on, everybody? What is cracking, racking? This is Medicosis Perfectionatus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's resume my biology playlist. For the last several videos, we have been talking about your digestive system. What if we can put it all together in one humongous video? If you have watched my previous video, this will make perfect sense to you. If this is new to you, back up, calm down, and watch my previous videos first because we'll go very quickly. Again, this is part of my biology series. What is digestion? Digestion is the conversion of big macromolecules into tiny micromolecules. After you digest, it's time for you to absorb. No digestion, no absorption. Who is the absolute hero of digestion? The answer is the pancreas, especially the exocrine pancreas. The pancreas alone can complete the entire process of digestion from A to Z. I'm talking about the exocrine pancreas, of course, particularly the acinus of those glands. What is food? Carbohydrate, protein, and fat. The purpose of digestion is to convert them to, from big molecules into small molecules, from this big carb molecule into tiny monosaccharides. Same thing for proteins and fats. After you break them down into teeny tiny molecules, now it's time for you to go to work. Eventually they become acetyl-CoA, boom, TCA cycle, boom, energy. That's why we eat. Digestion is to break down the big macromolecules into smaller micromolecules that can pass through membranes and be absorbed. So the starch and glycogen are broken down into monosaccharides, glucose, fructose, galactose. The big protein macromolecules are broken down eventually into amino acids and the big triglyceride fats are broken down into free fatty acid and 2-monoglycerol. Whenever we mention fat, we should also mention the fat-soluble vitamins. Let's go from head to toe or from mouth to anal canal. Let's talk about your mouth, mechanical digestion and chemical digestion. What do you mean by mechanical? Mastication. All right, these are skeletal muscles, voluntary action. Chemical, this is salivation. Don't forget your salivary amylase and salivary lipase. Amylase is for carb digestion, lipase is for lipid digestion. This lovely amylase is gonna digest carbohydrates such as starch from plants or glycogen from animals into maltose and dextrin. Who's gonna break down maltose then? This is the role of your small intestine because it has an enzyme known as maltase, but that will be way downstairs. Who makes the saliva? Your salivary glands, and you have three pairs of major salivary glands. The mouth will send that bolus of food into the esophagus via the pharynx in a process known as swallowing. Your esophagus has three thirds, upper third voluntary, lower third involuntary, and the middle is kind of ah uh, in between. How does the food move downwards? Via peristalsis. After your esophagus, there is the stomach, mechanical and chemical, motility and secretion, myenteric versus submucosal plexus, who stimulates mechanical and chemical digestion, the parasympathetic nervous system, i.e. vagus nerve, and who inhibits motility and secretion, sympathetic nervous system, i.e. greater splanchnic nerve. Stomach contains parietal cells to secrete the acid and the intrinsic factor. The acid is to clean stuff and to convert pepsinogen, which comes from the chief cell, into pepsin. Pepsin will help you digest proteins. The intrinsic factor will help you absorb vitamin B12. Next, G cells secrete gastrin, which is pro gastric motility and secretion. This is the only GI hormone that is pro stomach. All the other doofuses are anti stomach. The stomach contains mucus glands containing goblet cells to secrete mucus to protect the stomach wall from the acidity of the cavity of the stomach. Next, we have delta cells for somatostatin, the doofus, who is a universal inhibitor, and enterochromaffin-like cells which secrete histamine, which stimulates the lovely parietal cells to make more acid. If a family member of yours had heartburn before and went to the store to pick up some pills, odds are these pills work by inhibiting the receptor of that histamine, and therefore the parietal cell will make less acid. Ergo, less heartburn, hopefully. After the stomach, we have the small intestine. Mechanical, chemical, and absorption. 
Mechanical motility, same thing. Chemical secretions, what do we secrete, please? GI enzymes and GI hormones. These GI enzymes will help us digest carbohydrates and proteins, but not necessarily fat. The GI hormones are pro motility and secretion. First, we'll talk about the GI enzymes from the intestine, and then we'll talk about the hormones. GI enzymes from the small intestine to digest carbohydrates and to digest proteins. To digest carbohydrates, I have the maltase, isomaltase, lactase, and sucrase. Maltase digests maltose into two molecules of glucose. Isomaltase is very similar. Lactase will convert lactose into glucose and get lactose. Sucrase will digest sucrose into glucose and fructose. Now let's digest proteins. There is the amino peptidase to break down big peptides into smaller amino acids. There is a dipeptidase to break down dipeptides into amino acids. And there is my hero enteropeptidase. Not only it breaks down peptides, it also converts trypsinogen into trypsin and procarboxypeptidases A and B into carboxypeptidases. Where did trypsinogen come from? From the pancreas. How about procarboxypeptidase? Also from the pancreas. These are inactive, but the enteropeptidase will convert them to their active counterparts. Next, let's talk about GI hormones. Most of them come from the upper part of small intestine. Gastrin comes from the stomach and upper part of small intestine. Gastrin is secreted by G cells in the stomach and it's pro-motility and secretion of the stomach. Secretin is from the S cells in the upper part of small intestine. It goes to the pancreas. Endocrine or exocrine? Exocrine pancreas. SNS or duct? Duct cells. And tell them to secrete. Humongous amount of secretions rich in water and bicarbonate to neutralize the acidity that's being dumped upon us from the acidic stomach. Because all of the enzymes in your body need to work in a slightly alkaline environment with the exception of Mr. Pepsin. Next, CCK, cholecystokinin pancreozymin. Why do you call it cholecystokinin? Because I will cause movement of the cholecyst. I will squeeze that gallbladder, dish the bile out into the duodenum. Why did you call you pancreozymin? Because I'll secrete enzymes from the pancreas. Oh, that makes sense. Which part of the pancreas, endocrine or exocrine? Exocrine. Are you talking about the acinus or the duct? I'm talking about the acinus. What are you secreting? Water and bicarbonate? Shut up, that was secretin. I will release those digestive enzymes also into the duodenum. This will help you digest proteins, carbohydrates, and fat. The bile will help you emulsify the fat. Hey, medicosis, this is so much information, it's making my stomach turn. No pun intended. Ha ha ha. Then somatostatin is for you. It's a universal inhibitor. It inhibits everything. It inhibits motility. It inhibits secretion. It even inhibits its own secretion. This doofus comes from the delta cells or the D cells. Don't forget to review your anatomy, which we have discussed before. Pause and review. The pancreas alone can complete the process of digestion from A to Z. We're talking about protein, carbohydrate, and fat digestion. Which part of the pancreas are you referring to when it comes to digestion? Endocrine or exocrine? Exocrine. Duct or acinus? Acinus, of course. Who is boosting this? Secretin or CCK? CCK. The pancreas can help you digest proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. Protein digestion. Pancreas secretes trypsinogen and procarboxypeptidases A and B. Chymotrypsinogen is very similar to trypsinogen. Who is going to convert the inactive into the active enteropeptidase? Why did we secrete them as inactive? Why not just secrete the active form from the beginning? Because if the pancreas secrete the active form, the pancreas will digest itself. Oh, that will be horrible. So we will wait until we reach that duodenum lumen so that we get activated by the duodenal enteropeptidase. Enter means uh, coming from the intestine. Now we have the active forms. The active forms will help you digest proteins. Next, fat digestion. The pancreas secretes lipase and colipase and phospholipase 
and cholesterol esterase break down those big fats into smaller molecules such as free fatty acids and two monoglycerols pancreas will help you digest carbohydrates as well break down the starch or the glycogen into maltose here is the role of the pancreas we have non-fat digestion what do you mean by non-fat carbs and proteins for carbs i have amylase for you for proteins there is trypsin chymotrypsin carboxypeptidase a carboxypeptidase b and other proteases how about for lipid well now we're talking we have lipase colipase cholesterolesterase and phospholipase pause and review just don't forget that the pancreas has chemical digestive functions but the liver slash gallbladder i.e bile has mechanical digestive function what do you mean by mechanical i mean emulsification of fat bile is not an enzyme and that's why i love cck very much cholecystokine and pancreozymin before you know it you will digest emulsify and absorb fat and fat soluble vitamins now let's review each macromolecule alone carbohydrates alone and then proteins and then lipids carbs alone start with the big ones starch or glycogen and then thanks to the amylase from the saliva and from your pancreas we have maltose and isomaltose thanks to the maltase from the small intestine we'll have two molecules of glucose all right how about if the carb was milk then it contains lactose thanks to lactase from the small intestine you end up with glucose and get lactose sugar cane contains sucrose sugar thanks to sucrase also from the small intestine you have glucose and fructose fibers are carbohydrates they are non-digestible carbohydrates why because they contain cell wall of those plants cell wall contains cellulose and your body does not contain cellulase enzyme you cannot digest them they will make a bulk they will remain in your intestine until they end up in the stool what's good about that is that they will attract water by osmosis and therefore they can help you mitigate and alleviate and ameliorate the symptoms of constipation we're done with carbs let's talk about protein digestion you can say thank you to your stomach especially the chief cells which made the pepsinogen but pepsinogen is inactive who's going to activate it hydrochloric acid which came from parietal cells pepsin will help you digest proteins now we have polypeptides polypeptides are going to go to the duodenum in the duodenum we have chymotrypsin elastase carboxypeptidase don't forget to say thank you to your pancreas especially to trypsin but you cannot say thank you to trypsin without saying thank you to the small intestine enteropeptidase formerly known as enterokinase so let's take a deep breath and do this again the pancreas secretes trypsinogen all right inactive who's going to activate trypsinogen into trypsin enteropeptidase where the flip did it come from from the entero from the intestine i get it now trypsin is active true yeah trypsin will activate his brothers which also came from the pancreas now you have activated chymotrypsin elastase carboxypeptidase break down those polypeptides the small intestine will chime in not only with the enteropeptidase but also with aminopeptidase and dipeptidases break them down baby and now we absorb those teeny tiny amino acids pause and review we're done with carbs we're done with proteins let's talk about fat this is the fat that's contained in the diet in order for you to absorb fat or fat soluble vitamins you need three organs to be normal and intact and healthy one liver and biliary system two pancreas three the gut which will do the actual absorption if you're absorbing anything but fat i mean carbs i mean proteins you will go through the blood vessel route because these are water soluble and your blood is made of plasma which is basically water but if you're talking about absorption of fat you're not going to blood vessels you're going to lymph vessels known as lacteals and this is the story of the myceles thank you so much bile this is the story of the packages known as chylomicrons the lipid is in the interior protein is on the exterior lipid soluble in water soluble out before you know it we are in the lymph capillaries and then lymph vessels take me back to big veins after i clean all of this 
from toxins. This is the story of bile salts. They are amphibathic, hydrophilic, and hydrophobic. Hydrophilic on the outside, the water near the water, near the protein. But the inner is hydrophobic, i.e. lipophilic, it loves fat. Put the fat next to the fat. This is the story of the mycelium. Then chylomicrons, then lymph capillaries, bigger lymph vessels, afferent lymphatics, lymph nodes, efferent lymphatics, big veins, right atrium. To digest and absorb fat, you need pancreas, and gallbladder and an intact gut wall. Don't forget, this is necessary to absorb the fat and the fat-soluble vitamins, vitamin K, E, D, and A. Now here is everything you need to know about digestion in one beautiful slide. Let's talk about carbohydrate. You need your salivary amylase, pancreatic amylase, and intestinal maltase, isomaltase, lactase, and sucrase. Before you know it, the big carbs are now micromolecules, glucose, galactose, and fructose. You can absorb these. Proteins require gastric pepsin, which is dependent on the HCL, pancreatic trypsin, chymotrypsin, carboxy, peptidase, elastase, other proteases, etc. Why do we call it carboxypeptidase? Because it removes the carboxyl group, the carboxyl terminus of the protein or peptide. Contrast that with the aminopeptidase, which is going to remove the amino or the N terminus of the peptide. Oh, I get it. That's why carboxypeptidase versus aminopeptidase. The C end versus the N terminus. The intestine will give you aminopeptidase, enteropeptidase, and dipeptidase. Before we know it, the protein macromolecules became amino acid micromolecules. You will absorb these. When it comes to fat, we start with big fats such as triglycerides. You will need salivary lipase, pancreatic lipase, colipase, phospholipase, cholesterol esterase. You will need bile acids, bile salts, which make the micelles, the amphibathic structures. And then we broke them down into fatty acids and two monoglycerols. You will absorb these. Pause and review. Bring a piece of paper and write everything here down. Repetition is the mother of pedagogy. This was GI biology. If you want GI pharmacology, I have an Utacoids pharmacology course on my website. I also have a renal physiology course at medicosisperfectsnellis.com. My premium courses come with videos and with PDF notes. Or you can try my brand new surgery high yields course. 12 hours of doozy content at medicosisperfectsnellis.com. And for a limited number of students, get a 40% discount towards any course on my website by using discount code TOXIDROME. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell, and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snellis, where medicine makes perfect sense.